Hello and welcome to Emma Reads Reddit. Today I'm reading from r slash pro revenge. This story was posted by user Von Adler. Fired? Are you sure? Okay. So my friend's father, since retired, was a mechanical engineer. He was around 55 when this happened and very experienced in his field. In fact, he had some skill sets that were close to unique to the extent that you might be able to replicate them, but at extreme costs. We're talking multiple people from multiple companies from multiple countries taking weeks if not months to get up to speed with specific projects to do the same things. He was also a no bullshit kind of guy who did his job, did it well, but also pointed out problems and expected others to point out problems to him. He was extremely solution oriented and had no time for office politics or keeping a positive attitude at work. Basically, your everyday grumpy older engineer who really knew his thing and was always ready to help if you asked. But not very forthcoming in team building exercises and so on. He also ran his own business on the side doing minor projects and so on. As was required by his employer, he had reported this and was sure to not cause any conflicts of interests, so his employer knew and accepted this. He was considered a valuable employee and got several awards that he cared little for, but anyway, during his many years with his employer. By all accounts, they paid him well, respected his knowledge and accommodated his style, and he returned the favour by working very hard and making sure to mentor younger and newly employed engineers to make them effective co-workers. Then his firm was acquired by a larger firm and a new management team installed. Initially, everyone was promised that things would remain the same, but with the new management came a new office culture. The new management pressured for unpaid overtime, for a more American corporate culture with cheering and clapping and so on. He considered it extremely cringe and refused to participate. His status as a long-standing and knowledgeable employee kept him safe for some time before the new management realised that resistance to the new culture centred around him and started pressuring him to play along. When he did not, they turned increasingly hostile, realising that he held a lot of soft power in the company, having mentored a large percentage of the engineers and resistance to their leadership centering around him. They started ordering him to work overtime. He answered that he was on time with his projects and if they had identified an emergency requiring overtime, they would have to bring it up with the union to negotiate the overtime and make sure it was an actual emergency. The contract with the union said no overtime unless in an emergency. They try to force him to participate in the cheering and clapping by making it mandatory for him to attend and yelling at him to participate and he did but so unenthusiastically that the event turned even more cringe and people started laughing. The workday turned more and more hostile and he knew that things would come to a head sooner or later. Being an experienced engineer and knowing how to document things, he already had his ducks in a row. Then it finally happened. They caught him answering an email from his side business on his work laptop, brought him in and fired him on the spot for theft of company resources. He sat at the conference table and looked the three managers in their eyes, one after the other, and asked, Are you sure you want to do this? They all said yes. Are you really sure you want to do this? He was escorted to his desk by security to leave his phone, his badge and his computer at the desk and then escorted out. Once out of the building, he phoned his union representative who immediately cancelled the firing, claiming there was no just cause, which meant that it would go to a labour board for arbitration. You see, the company had an IT policy that it was okay to use the company laptop for personal business, including a side business, as long as you were on break and compliant with IT security protocols and the company was aware of and had approved his side business. And he was on a break. Of course, he had his declaration of a side business signed by his former manager and the IT policy available and sent both to the union representative. Then he called his lawyer and asked him to send the pre-prepared cease and desist on two patents he held. Patents that were not that significant and nothing he could make any serious money out of since they were mostly for very specific things used by the solutions he designed and used at his employers, but still his that he had brought with him into the employment and allowed the employer to use in exchange for a slightly higher pay, all duly documented in his contract, of course. Then he went home for some vacation and tending his side business. 
He was always a man to prepare and had enough money saved up to last him for a good time, to the extent that he considered retiring entirely. My friend said he had two job offers from competitors that had looked to sniping him from some time within the week, basically as soon as they learned he was available. He was gracious but declined, but offered them to consult with his side business now that he had the time, which they eagerly accepted, at twice the hourly rate he had made at his earlier employers. His colleagues started ringing the day after for advice since the projects he had managed could not go on without him. He was perfectly polite but denied any information and help, saying he had left everything he had with management and to contact them as he was no longer employed there. Several clients that phoned his private number were told the same thing. Since his private number was not on a public registry, he suspected that both colleagues and clients spent some time and or money to find it. It took two weeks before a manager phoned and asked things. He politely declined to answer, got yelled at and replied with something like, I am sorry, you must have mistaken me for someone who works for you and hung up. This happened a few times and the next week, HR phoned him and stated the firing had been a mistake and he was welcomed back to his job. He again politely declined, saying that he awaited the Labour Board's decision, but until then he was happy to consult for them at six times his hourly pay, after taxes and administrative costs, of course. After a few days of wrangling and trying to negotiate, they had to accept, and then he sprung the patent issue on them, forcing them to pay for those too. Less than two and a half weeks after being fired, he was back at his desk. After roughly three months, the firing came to the Labour Board. The employer stated that they believed they had handled the issue correctly, but were still willing to offer my friend's father his position back in the interests of goodwill and reconciliation. My friend's father and the union simply stated that he was now employed elsewhere, his own company, and no longer available. The Labour Board ruled in my friend's father's and the union's favour, and he got the normal damages. Three months pay damage and 24 months pay severance package, including pensions and, of course, the lawyer costs of the union, paid by the employer. According to my friend, her father continued to work there until he retired, working 20 hours or so per week and 10 to 15 hours for other companies, making a pretty penny, continuing to charge them three times what he charged their competitors as an arsehole tax. Managers were not fired, but they were moved into their own group apart from the rest of the department when it came to bonus calculations and the cost of her father's consultancy fees and the cost of the Labour Board arbitration were budgeted there, meaning they were constantly over budget and thus ineligible for bonuses for several years, which was a decent percentage of the incentives at that company, making at least one of them quit. My friend also said her father usually met any management complaints with a big shit-eating grin and what are you going to do about it? Fire me after that. Chicka Chicka Bow Wow down in the comments says this is beautiful. I'm not sure of my favourite part. The pre-prepared cease and desist letters on the patents he owned, the consultant fees being six times his regular pay or the 24 month severance package. Actually, I know my favourite part that those asshole managers still had to go clap and cheer every morning because they don't know how to do anything else while they were hemorrhaging money. Just glorious. Having worked in HR previously, I've seen many a new manager try to bring with them the same culture they had at their old jobs because it's what they know, so it must be better. But it only ever serves to rock the boat. Unless it's actually broke, don't fix it. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed what you've heard, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of the daily content from Emma Reads Reddit. See you tomorrow.